Uh, no, uh, well, basically, the, you know, I obviously went through the fact you can't make mistakes. We can't continue to make mistakes at this level. Um, and equally, the kind of uh, the feeling that every time we build something, which the end of the last season clearly showed, and then kind of letting it go again a bit too easily. Um, you know, the first two games, I've had a chance to step on it. It's difficult. It is difficult here, and we are stretched and all the rest of it. I don't like making excuses, but we are. That's a fact. But, you know, we, we, it's a strange situation here, and it's been here for a number of years. You know better than me. But in my 90 months, we kind of build something, and then we have to go back down the hill again to then remind ourselves of the challenge, and then we all pull together and we do it again. And I'm like, well, what about not doing that? What about just reacting to a game at nil-nil? What about taking responsibility at nil-nil? You know, see, well, strangely, it's easier to take responsibility when you're one and two-nil down because everyone goes, oh, well. You know, every manager will call it two-nil down football, and everyone starts playing, and you're like, well, what about playing when it's nil-nil? So within all of the challenges, which are quite obvious, we've got to remind ourselves of the truth of what we are and what we're trying to achieve. And that part of the mentality of the group, we've, we've shown it before how positive it can be, but it, we, it, we let it go too easy. And today was, I thought, the beginning of the game, although they're, they're, we know they're a good outfit, we know they've spent money on some real talents, we know all that. Big stadium, first game at home and everything. And they started like that. And we just started a little bit subserviently. We had good organisation, but the first goal was a sign of it. Everyone just backing off and just letting people run into the box and that kind of, you know, it's only two or three yards, but it's two or three yards and that intent to go and stop moments like that. And then the second one, obviously, you're like, you know, it's impossible to legislate for, so you turn it down. And when you turn it down a place like this, anywhere in the Premier League, it's tough against good sides, and they are a good side. And then you're on that risk or reward of opening up, trying to affect the game in a positive manner, knowing at clubs like this with these type of players who they've brought in, they can hurt you. And of course, they did. They opened us up. And that's, that's the risk or reward of, of life in the Premier League. Do you have any theories why the players started like this? Yeah, because they're Tottenham and they're, they're, they look around and they're looking around going, where are all our players? Where are all the usual players? You know, they're going, so, you know, there's a human reaction to that. Um, on the other hand, we've done well at when the challenges have come our way, whether it's been um, injuries or skinny squads or no money or the noise around the outside. We've done great. You know, we've really pulled together and gone, right, let's just take it on. So I reminded her that afterwards and said, look, it's been a knock the first two games of the season. There's many reasons why players missing pre-season injuries and all the rest of it. But remind ourselves that this has been round before. It's not our first rodeo. So therefore, let's take it on. Let's grow with that mentality. And yet again, we're written off immediately. So I said, in a way, a weird way, we seem to be good at that. We get written off and then everyone pulls together and we start changing the story again. <sighs> I mean, it's a head scratcher, but it's tough. You know, every time we, we get on that from last season, we change the story after a real tough day at Chelsea. We completely change the storyline. And then we get to the summer and you sell big players and, you, you, you know, you're trying to bring players back in and you're trying to build a squad and, and the challenge just starts again. And it's, and it's a never-ending challenge so far at Everton Football Club. Do you have any concerns therefore that the start of the season and the issues go beyond the injuries? Well, people have been talking about that since I've been here. People have been saying, is it the ownership, is it this, is it that, the points and money and all the rest of it. But we've still found our way. So it's important to remind ourselves, stay focused on what we do. And that's what I try and do at Everton Football Club. It's tough. You know, there's so many stories, so much noise around every day at Everton Football Club, and it's not very often about the football. But we've done it since I've been here, so we've got to do it again. Yeah, um, obviously a big challenge for him. I thought he did great. Um, you know, once he got his feeling of the game, I thought he did really, really well. Young player, developing, trying to work hard in a, in a, in a very tough day today. But I commended him afterwards for handling it and sticking to task. I thought he did great. Okay. Sean, just on that, do you think Dixon has a chance of staying after deadline day? Do you think he can be an answer to help the squad? Uh, staying after deadline day, sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry, I see what you mean, yeah. Yeah, look, I mean, he has been thrown in the deep end somewhat. Um, we would like to develop him further. We have got other players who are coming back to full fitness. So we'll have to make a call on that w this week. Yeah, sorry, I see what you mean, yeah. Yeah, because he is that type of player, really. You know, you think he'd be out there playing. I talk about two careers, a career away from Everton and then growing and learning and then coming back into the Premier League. He's been thrown at the deep end, but he's done very well. So we'll see, we'll see what the week brings and, of course, injuries um, or people recovering from injury. Sorry, to see what that offers us as well. I just felt there was a bit of a lack of anger from you and the fans and it was almost like an acceptance that like, a 4 0 defeat um, can happen here. Anger doesn't change anything. People are angry around the world, you know, all over the place. And everyone goes, why are you getting angry? It's not going to change anything. What changes anything is action, not anger.
So I'll be taking action. I wonder if that was an acceptance of a maybe a lack of... Point. No, there's no acceptance of anything here. We, we've, the, the, the end of the day is there's realities to all challenges in football. I know I've been here all my life. But that's not an acceptance. That's just a reality. They're completely different things. So is there a reality that it's tough to come down here anyway? Yes. Is there a reality it's even tougher when you've got a thin squad and you haven't invested like these have? Yes. Does that mean they win? No. I've shown that many, many times before. Not just me, my players, the teams I work with, both the player, coach and the manager. It doesn't always work like that. But you have to make it not work like that. Not just wait for it and hope it's a lucky day. You have to make games like today work in your favour. And we didn't have enough to do that today. Everton have always been kind of close to the relegation zone in the last few seasons and always just about found enough, like, you know, you've brought that into the club as well. Uh, is it not, are we not a bit scared that maybe this time there's not enough there? To... No, the, the, this is the challenge. It's, it's a never-ending challenge since I've been here. I can't speak before that. Um, but it's all I've known at Everton Football Club. You know, we, we, like I said, just said, we finished strongly last season. Um, we sell a, a player who's growing and maturing and become a very important player. And then we bring in other players who we've got to start the process again with and sort of make them grow and mature and become important players. Um, and it, and it's, uh, it's just a cycle that keeps going and going and going. Uh, that's just the reality of the club. And I, I, I always try and work on realities. And, and it's difficult to have a football club. There's plenty of myths about it. The, the latest one being it's the last... We're speaking about this with the local media the other day. You know, the last season at the old lady. So, therefore, we're going to be in Europe. And I went, how's that then? So, what happened to the last three seasons? Do you think we weren't trying? Do you think we weren't trying to be in Europe? You know, there has to be some reality to the storyline. And I've tried to bring that. And I'm still trying to bring that. The fact is, coming here with a thin squad is tough. But does that mean you accept it? No doesn't mean you accept it because you can still do things in football when it is tough. And that's our, that's our job and our responsibility is to still take action when it's tough. And that's what we're going to do uh, going forward. Yep. On the fourth goal, you've got Spurs defender running away from the pitch and setting us off. Is that the kind of thing that can happen when you know, the game is lost? Or are you... no, that's the kind of uh, thing you can happen when you've got a £40 million centre-half who sprints yeah. like no one we've ever seen in the Premier League. <laughs> And they run down the pitch and they roll it to another fella who, who's half decent. I don't know you remember the lad Son. He, he does all right, I think. That's a, another reality. Simple as that. That's what them players are capable of. Do, do, do you hate seeing that? Or are you just hate no, it's not about hating seeing it. It's just a reality. I could, like it, hate it. It's irrelevant. That was what can happen when you're playing against these clubs and the power they have in the market to bring in some of the best players, in certainly in Europe, if not the world. That's a, another reality of the Premier League. Paddy? Sean, I know finances are tight, but if what you've seen in the open few games changed your perspective? It's completely irrelevant. At the end of the day, whether, it's, it, it, whether my perspective is positive or negative about the situation, that is the reality, another reality. It's not like, you know, it's another weird thing in football where they go, well, why aren't you going to buy someone? And I go, what do you mean? There is no money. I don't, know. I don't understand what you mean. It's like, it's like as a manager, you, you don't want to buy anyone. And which is obviously bizarre. You know, you're like, what, what do you think? I'd say, no, no, let's keep, let's keep the money in. <laughs> it's just not. It's just a strange thing that people sometimes think. The fact is, that until I'm told different, there isn't any finance to go and change things. This is what we are. And with that in mind, when would you expect to have Jared and, and Seamus? Yeah, Jared's going to take a bit. Um, Seamus is a bit closer. Uh, might be on the grass, hopefully, in the week coming forwards. And Jimmy Garner as well in the week coming forwards. Whether we... Whether they've got enough in their, under their belts training-wise to risk on Tuesday, because obviously we're, we're in that knife edge of risk and reward again, um, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but no, there's a couple of them too. Youngie comes back out of suspension, of course. Um, but Jared will be a bit longer. Um, and obviously Youssef, is, who was having a really strong pre-season, he's going to be longer than that as well. So that, that's a, a, a bit of a um, something we could do without, let's put that way. Can I just ask, Illuminan and Dye comes on and goes to the left and Dwight comes inside. Could you maybe just explain? Yeah, because we played a three. So we had three in midfield, and obviously at that stage we are finding different ways, trying to find different ways. Illy's good at coming off the left. He can dart inside, which he so nearly did. Um, yeah, so we'd, we're finding out about these players. We're learning about them, you know, the, the best positions, the best response, the best way they can play for us and be effective in the Premier League because they haven't played in the Premier League. So, you know, you've got to see it, you've got to feel it, you've got to get used to it and let them get used to it as well. Do you think that might be his best position? No, I think he can be adaptable. I think he can... I've already spoken to him about it across that kind of band... Um, not not maybe so much as an out and out centre forward, but certainly one coming and playing with the centre forward in the top of the midfield, and certainly coming off the wide.